think I have exactly what you're looking for. What? It's right here on this table. This book? Don't you want to look at it? What's in it? Why don't you see? Okay. I can't let you look at it yet. I need some additional information from you before you're allowed to look at it. Rules are rules. Like what? See, according to the binding guidelines set forth on paragraph 6, I need your driver's license. Birth certificate. Social security card. High school diploma. Dental records. An acknowledgement saying that you take this book upon your own free will and it may or may not raise vampires from the dead. Got it. A statement confirming your own stupid teenage angst against this town. Definitely have that. And a club card, any major grocery store or department store chain in the region. What, you don't have that? No, I forgot my wallet. Then I can't let you have the book, I'm sorry. If you don't let me have that book, I can't get naked later in the movie. Considering this is the best thing in the garbage horror... Alright. Thanks! Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Garbage Horror episode number six. I'm glad someone's counting. Yeah, uh, someone has to. I have to upload these to Blip. Yeah. And YouTube. And YouTube. And We're YouTube. On YouTube now. We have YouTube now, by the way, for everyone. We'll go ahead and get in that out yeah. of the way. If you have been not watching our episodes or not watching them reliably because we're getting annoyed with Blip, we are now at youtube.com slash garbage horror. We'll be uploading the episodes there almost immediately after they appear on Blip. YouTube's a little slow. Give it time. <laughs> Not our fault. We're trying. So on that note, we have a new movie this week. Yes. <laughs> new movie. Let's cut to the chaser. New movie called Vamp Again. This movie has it all. It has vampires. It has girls. And that's about it. That's okay. That's all it has. Yeah. Um, this is a 2010 production by Trout Creative. So we're going now into the very, very recent territory with this film. And it's a story about vampires and girls, so yeah. lay out the tale. <laughs> okay, well, it starts off back in the 1800s with a <laughs> with vampires being chased out of their country, and they come to America, and yeah. they settle in Arizona. <laughs> According to the movie, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula like screwed the pooch in Europe, yeah. so they all had to flee. Yes, and they chose people Arizona. knew about them. They chose Arizona because they're stupid. Probably. But no offense to Phoenix. No, no. Phoenix is cool? I like Phoenix. <laughs> Please continue. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so they go to Arizona. The uh, the hero, Richard Longshank. That is not a phallic name at all. No. Not no, at all. That's not a play on words. <laughs> um, he, uh, he actually winds up being able to kill them briefly or send them to another realm. It's not it's, really explained. It's not clear. But unfortunately, he dies at the same time. Yeah. He does. And so then we come to modern day where there's a group of girls um, that... Uh, pretending to be 18-ish, we'll say. Yeah, I think they're supposed to be in high school because they it's have uncool. to sneak out alcohol, which if they were 21 or older, they could just But buy they it. talk about college, so it's kind of vague yeah. where they're at. They're, they're high school, college. We'll just yeah. say that and leave it there. But they don't look like... No, they're either, definitely 30 so. and 4 year olds playing college girls so it's kind of weird. except for maybe one yeah except for maybe one yeah but anyway so that adds to the confusion so they are they're goth girls they hate their lives so the simplest way to, to deal with deal, to deal with this to get revenge on the town to deal with it is of course to raise a bunch of vampires to slaughter everyone well not only that but they want to extend their horrible lives by living forever makes absolute sense to me yeah exactly <laughs> So, so, anyway, they uh, do some rituals, and they they yeah, are able to, to raise the vampires back from whatever they well, were. The first ritual fails miserably. Well, yeah, because she made it up. It was a, I think as she put it, it was a little Van Rice and, and a little, little H.R. Geiger. H.R. Geiger, yeah. Yeah, and that one totally or fails. Was it Lovecraft? I don't think it was Lovecraft, actually. Yeah. That one totally fails, but then she encounters this mysterious book at a garage sale. Yeah, because that's where all the mysterious no, books are. That's apparently. where I buy all my occult merchandise, yeah. is uh, random garage shells as I'm walking down the street. Uh, she encounters that, decides this one's the real deal, does it, and now the vampires come to life and the big battle for survival begins. Right. <sighs> what a weird movie. I mean... It is a very strange movie. And the 
the character responses do not make a lot of sense no. because after the first ritual fails, everybody is terrified yeah, they have, that it might have actually worked. They have a brief moment of panic where they hear something and, oh my God, did it work? Did we raise yeah, vampires? Right, and exactly. It just turns out to be two uh, douchebags that are yeah. playing a trick on them. And those two douchebags do pop up uh, a couple, several times in the movie to right. do exactly that, uh, to kind of right. spoil the fun of the ritual, so to yeah. speak. And they're... I guess you would call them the comic relief of the movie if you could single out any two characters as the comic relief in the movie. I, I think that would be more Igor, but we'll get to him in a minute. Yeah, we'll get to Igor in a minute. But it, it, it's, you're right, they, they were so nervous about it, yet they get this real book that starts doing spooky things. They're like, oh, let's right. do it again, let's go, let's, this is awesome. Right, I mean, at one point the book flies out of the girl's hand in front of everyone, mm -hmm. opens up to a page, and then unfolds a map and shows them where they're supposed to go to do the they ritual. Because they didn't know where they were supposed to do this ritual at. That right. was the last element of confusion. Right. But, yeah, I mean, it, it's a strange movie, very weirdly put together, because you have that first 10-minute, 9, 10-minute bit, right. which is set in the Wild West, and it's actually very well shot, very well acted, mm -hmm. and just generally a well-done segment overall. And then it kicks into this modern era, and you get like 40 minutes yeah. of these, uh, it's a group of five, Yeah. That these five teens uh, driving around, talking, being all gothy and stuff, yeah. appearing topless at random points for no valid reason. And then it kicks on again with the second ritual. <laughs> right. And so it's a very weirdly built movie. There's some front-loaded action and some back-loaded action, but that stuff in the middle is... It is pretty bland. It's fairly boring stuff. However, the music in this movie. Yeah. We do have to hit on that. The music actually was pretty interesting. It had some yeah. good, cool songs. This would be one of those candidates for a bad movie, great soundtrack. Yeah. Like yeah. Dracula 2000 is another excellent example of that. Um, I would consider that candidate, and right. all in all, the, I, I, I didn't absolutely hate the music. A lot of these bad movies, they have very stupid, very forgettable music. This one actually had some good tracks to yeah, it. Yeah, it did, even if it didn't always fit with what was yeah, going on. Yeah, it was like the, like the very beginning of Wild West right. scene, you have that heavy metal track. Yeah. It's like, well, it's cool and all, but how does that work with this movie? Yeah. It doesn't really. So yeah, I mean that was. But it, it was a, it was a nice song. And it was a whole the whole movie was kind of incongruent in that way though, mm. as far as the sound effects go. Um, so I guess good, bad, best, worst. Okay. All right. You want to take the first, or you want to go? I've been going uh, first. You all go. right. My my good, bad, my good. <laughs> Woo! I threw pretty, you off. <laughs> yeah, no, you threw me off by making me go first. I can't handle this. <laughs> Um, the good. Overall, I actually like the vampire's story in this one. I thought it was kind of interesting, the idea of Bram Stoker's Dracula screwing everything up in Europe. Right. They've got to flee to the new world. They wind up in the Wild West. Yeah. I thought that was a pretty cool backstory. You yeah, can have a lot of fun with vampire fan fiction with that, and they really could have done a lot of cool things with it. They didn't. Yeah. But I found it a very fascinating approach. Yeah. And you're good. My Good's the opening sequence. Kind of goes hand in hand yeah, with no. yours. <laughs> the first uh, nine minutes, pretty cool overall. Well yeah, shot, well it's... scripted. They they had a good pacing to it. It had good mm -hmm. tension build up. And the payoff was pretty good. Yeah. It really sets the stage for a very bland movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for it a just makes movie what, than what was shot. <laughs> it just makes what comes later seem that much worse in a way. Uh, the bad. You take this one uh, first. You the lead hero off. scenes. Oof. Anytime, hero. <laughs> yeah, anytime the main characters are just sitting around talking or they're driving, because there's a lot of driving scenes for whatever yeah, reason. He's a crap van. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not really a van, but yeah. It, whatever, it just, SUV thing, it was just dull. It, yeah, it, it doesn't have a lot of action, so unfortunately we can't get a lot of good clips because of that. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm kind of pairing with you again on this one, playing yeah. off of that. Mine's D and D, dialogue and dubbing. Not the double D tits. No, amazingly not. Uh, no, and it was very interesting in this one. Ones. We'll get there. But the dialogue in this was trite. The writing was terrible. I mean, I feel bad for the actors in this movie. Even if they were great actors, they didn't have a lot to work with. The yeah. script was written terribly, ineffectively. And the dubbing, for some, they, even though they obviously recorded the movie in English, they went back and redubbed the lines in a studio, and it just didn't work. I mean, if you go back to our Cottontail review, you get a taste of what you're in for as far yeah. as the dubbing. Our dubbing in that was actually better than a lot of the scenes in this movie, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, ours was pretty bad. Ours was kind of, <laughs> and it was kind of deliberately bad, yeah. too. Okay, the best for me. I'll go first on this one. Yeah. I like the vampires overall. We talked in our recent uh, What is Garbage Horror mm -hmm. about how we love it when the people in front of the camera and behind the camera and around the camera are having a good time. Yeah. 
These guys are having a freaking blast. Yes, they it are. It shows. The overacting is perfect. It's on pitch. It fits the movie. I mean, if they did this in any other movie, the acting would just be god-awful and we'd be booing right. it. But here, it's pitch perfect. It's fun. It's silly. Yeah. You know they're having a great time and you can't help but smile every time they're on camera. And my favorite vampire is Igor. Oh, yeah. Igor um, is awesome. <laughs> he is a cross between... <laughs> between... Um, the, the Igor from Young Frankenstein, mm. Mel Brooks movie, mm. the uh, the mad scientist assistant, and Gollum. Yeah, he's that's, he, that's pretty much his acting yeah, ability. Uh, Giovanni, the lead vampire, is yeah. way over the top. Yeah. And here's the he top. Is. Here's Giovanni. Well, well, he's he's really happy though. You can tell that he's enjoying his role because he gets to play with the most boobs. Yes, and speaking of what your best. Yeah, my best are the tits in this. <laughs> <laughs> other than one pair that's really, really fake, the other two girls are, are natural and they're very nicely. And they also had the succubi in the scene with the garage. Yeah. And yeah. The, yeah, this so, whole movie basically was one giant plot device to get these women topless for extended periods of time right. throughout the course of the movie. Right. And I'm not going to argue against that. I'm no. going to be honest. I'm going to I'm going to give that a thumbs up even though I frankly think you could just go out and buy real porn and <laughs> or on the internet and get free porn. Exactly. So uh so for me the, I guess the, the worst to your turn. Yeah, the worst. The character of Mona. Yeah. A, she looked way too old to be in this role. I, you think Melissa looked older. I think Mona looked older. I'm sorry, but she's and uh, her I, acting was just wooden, terrible. It's wooden, and she looked confused quite a bit. Like she didn't know if she was supposed to do what she was doing. Yeah. Um, she looked very unsure of herself, and I know a lot of that um, comes from these budget movies. You can't hire the best actors, but she really struggled through this entire thing, and it really dragged the spirit down. She was completely unbelievable as the role of a teenage goth in any respect yeah. of the word. At least yeah. Melissa had some believability. <laughs> the, Melissa, the actress. Yeah. My worst, unfortunately, is Melissa's character. The actress that played Melissa, I think, did a better job than the actress that played Mona. Mona's actress was named Sugar. Yeah. That's how she's credited in IMDb. The one word, Sugar. But Melissa's character is terrible. This is a whiny, bratty, annoying... I mean, she wants to destroy the town because... Her parents are dysfunctional, and she thinks her yeah. life sucks. So the solutions to kill everyone. I mean, I, I knew a lot of goths growing up. I was thought to be a goth in many respects. I hung mm -hmm. out with a lot of goths, but none of them were like that. No, <laughs> that's like an, that's like how people think of goths, not yeah. how they actually are. It well, was, I mean, it, it's <sighs> it's bad because the one thing she wants to do is get out of town. Yeah. If you want to get out of town, leave. Move. Uh, you are obviously old enough to drive a car. Yes. And you have a set thinking of wheels about, available. At least thinking about college, just leave. It's so much easier yeah. than doing all these rituals to release vampires on the town. And deciding to live forever even though your life sucks. Yeah. I still don't get that. Melissa, to me, I mean, she's kind of the central figure to the initial plot at least. You know, Liz kind of takes over later. But she's just a terrible character, unlikable, and you're rooting for her to die the whole time just so the movie can improve. And, uh, uh. So, who would you recommend this to? Recommendation. Uh, anyone that cannot afford or cannot access real porn is an obvious <laughs> choice. So anyone without internet access. <laughs> Unfortunately, that would also preclude getting this on Netflix. Um, but also, just... You know, anyone that wants to see a little bit of hammy acting, the, the vampire schlock does have its merit. Yeah, they do have their moments, too. So if you're into that really over-the-top, fun-loving uh, garbage horror, it has its moments, at least. Yeah, it does. And I would recommend it to people who like tits and lesbians. Because Which there's, is, there's a lot of, I'm a lesbian, I'm a lesbian, I'm a lesbian, you movie. know, in yeah. this movie. Melissa's character is a lesbian. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Yeah. It was only referenced about a hundred times in the movie. Yeah. Well, I think that summarizes Vamp again pretty well. Oh. On that note, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this was Garbage Horror for Vamp again. Okay, I'm ready for the four beautiful topless succubi to come get me. Hello? Cut!